Hi everyone, once again welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a CRUD application using PHP and a Bootstrap. Because I'm using PHP, I'm using the local server, I'm using XAMPP. So at the moment, you can see my Apache and my SQL both running. So if you, this is the final project and also we needed a database. So I'm using PHP mod me and this was the database I created for my project i'm going to walk you through how to do everything step by step so we are actually going to update so when you click on update you should be able to add or update a record existing record in the system so you can easily change something click on update and you can see this has been what updated okay you can also delete so if i go to the one with id5 and i want to delete this i can just click on delete and then you can see this has been deleted from the system we can also go ahead and add a new user so when you come here you want to add a new user you can actually go ahead and then add a new user so if i add id bad add the and then i want to add email for this i can go ahead and then yes add email okay and then you can add some random phone number I'm basically i'm validating any of this information so let's just do this and then click on submit so add the was added to the system so we can actually do this step by step and i'm going to walk you through how to do this remember to like subscribe for more videos like this we're going to jump into action and then start creating this so i use my interface i use bootstrap to design my pattern so if you come to bootstrap or get bootstrap.com you can actually download this or you can use the cdn that's the using the online version i'm using the offline version so basically i have everything well organized and if you have XAMPP installed then you should go to your drive c go to your drive c and then locate the XAMPP folder and then everything is going to be within the ht docs folder so i've created a new folder called new crowd and i'm going to have everything organized within this folder and this was the folder i used for my main program okay so let's start and then let's start creating this i'm using my favorite code editor that is VLC code editor, I'm going to use that. So, first, we want to create our first application, and that is going to be add user. So, we should be able to add a new user to our system. So, let me just say add user dot php. We want to add a new user dot php. So, that's the first thing we're going to do. And we want to basically add our CSS file to this. So, this CSS file, like I said, I'm going to use Bootstrap. I've already downloaded Bootstrap onto my computer. So I have the Bootstrap folder here. All I need to do is to copy the CSS file. I already have my CSS file here. I'll copy this from here and then paste this back within my folder. Okay, so I've already created a folder which is in the htdoc folder. I have everything right here. Okay, so I've added my bootstrap file to the folder. So now what we're going to do now is to start creating our file. So this is the bootstrap folder here. Yeah, this is the CSS file. That's the bootstrap file. It's now located over here. Now let's start creating our main form. So this is the form I created. So this is the add user form. So we want to create this form. We want to create this form. Add a new user. So we need a name. We need an email. We need a phone number. And then we need a password. So what I'm going to do over here will basically generate some template for my inputs that's the add user so let's just call this crowd application and then we're going to start coding this i'm first going to create a div and then call this container and then within this container we're going to create our users now before we do that we need to actually embed our css so let's link our css file at the heading of this so the css file is basically what we have over here that's the bootstrap file so we're just going to add our bootstrap file here that's meaning so this is a bootstrap file i'm going to use and then the next thing i'm going to do is to basically add my form over here so i'm going to create a form within my container so it's going to be form so i'm going to create my form and then within my form i'm going to have this form so i'm going to have name email phone number and then password so those are the forms i'm actually going to create but the first one creates 
the okay. form over here. So my form, I'm going to add a method. And then the method is actually going to post method. And we'll go ahead and then actually add a div class. So I just want to organize everything within a div. And I'm going to give a class here. So the class is actually going to be button bottom. I'm going to add three margin bottom. Okay, I'm going to add. So basically, I'm actually going to add a, a margin bottom to this, and this is actually going to be three. And then within this particular class, what I'm going to do is first give a label. So my label is actually going to be for name. So we have the name, and then we're actually going to create the form. So the form is going to be input. So within the input folder, we're going to add a name to this. So the name is also going to be name. We want to enter the name of the user. We want to put some placeholder there. The placeholder, let's say, enter your name. And also, I want to add some class over here, Bootstrap class for. This is going to be form control. So form control. Okay. So that is all for now. I'm just going to save this and let's view this within the browser. I'm just going to open this within my browser and we can follow along. So it's just basically going to be the same link, but I'm just going to change the name of my folder. So this is going to be instead of crowd, I'm going to say new crowd. And as you can see, we now have the name and then we have the entire name. So we're just going to go ahead and add some margin around this. Okay, so we want to create some margin around this form. But before that, let's add our next form. So now we need email. So we can just duplicate this and then just change this to what? Instead of name, we're going to change this to what? Email. And then this is actually also going to be email. And over here, instead of text, we're going to change this to what email. And the name is actually also going to be email. And the place will now be enter what email. Okay. We're going to save this again. And then load this within our browser. We're going to have that for email. We're going to have that for phone number. And then we have that for what password so we're just going to duplicate this twice one for phone number and one for what email okay so we're going to have this next one which is going to be phone number then we have that for phone number right here we're going to have this but here i'm just going to leave it as text for phone number here it's going to be phone number we we'll use this within PHP, so it's going to be one word and then enter our full number. Then we come down here, and this is going to be our password. We're going to have password here. And here, password is going to be password. And then the name is going to be password. And then place would all be enter password. Okay, so we can save this and then check this within our browser. We just come back here and then reload this in our browser. And then we should have all our form set up. Now, the next thing we need to do is to get the button for this. We need to get the button in order to submit whatever we want to do. So, we're going to create a button down here. We're going to create a button. So, this button is actually going to be in another D. Let me just say button. And this button is going to be submit. And I will give some property to this so let's say the button type is 
submit and I will give some property some bootstrap property so this is going to be btn btn private so this is a bootstrap property we are adding to this and then I'll actually give another link to this let me give them to this as well and I'm going to call this submit okay so now let's see this load this within our browser and see what we've done so far I'm just going to load this and then we should see our button down here now the next thing I'm going to do is to add some margin so that we have some space around our input we'll come here the container here we'll target our container and then add a bootstrap class for add some margin five add some space around this i'm just going to save this and then go down and then load this in the browser okay so you can see we have some space around this we have our form fully set up now after we set up this form we should be able to also send information to our database in that regards we have to create a database like subscribe for more videos like this so we come down into our page management click on create then we'll go to new and then let's give a new database so let's call it then let's call it new crowd db okay DB. so let's just call it and then click on create so we have our database created now this is the new crowd db and then we want to have up to about five records okay we're going to have the id we're going to have the id as well so let's just call it users so the table within this database let's just call it what users and let's click on what to okay so let's create our database and then we'll add information through the user so we're going to have id for our database and this id is going to be auto incremented and it's going to be primary key then we're also going to have let's see the name and the name we're going to leave it as voucher and then I'm going to leave it around 100. I'm also going to add the email, and email I'm going to leave it as about voucher, and I'm going to say 100. And I'm going to add phone number here. Phone number I'm also going to leave it as voucher, and then let me say 20. And then finally, I'm going to add the password. Okay, password can be mixed up numbers, so let me just say voucher again, and then let's leave it around 50. So once we are set with everything, what I'm going to do is click on save, our database should be created. So now I have our database here, so the name of our database is the new crowd DB. So that's the data we're going to use and these are the tables. We have just one table, it's called the user table and these are the columns we have within our tables. Now that we have everything set up, we have our user, let's try adding some records to this table that we created. Okay. It's basically just click on browse it's a new table where we don't have any record within this table so what we're going to do next is basically add record to this table and then what we need to do is also connect to the database so let's just go ahead and click on let's say let's create a connection to our database so let's say db connect okay let me see db connect dot php so we're going to connect to the database and in order to do that, we need to get a name of our database. We need to get a name of our database and then go ahead and connect to our database. For this PHP, we're just going to create a PHP file for this. We're going to create a PHP file for this. And then down here, we need the name of a server. So let's say dollar server. server name so we need the name of our server which is basically going to be the local host so the name of our server is local host the next thing is going to be the username we also need the username so username so the username is actually going to be root and then we are basically have not set up any password for my database so I'm just going to create db pass. So let me say database pass. That's the db pass. And I'm not going to add anything because I don't have password for my database. And then finally, I'm going to have db name, the name of my database. Okay, so remember the name we created was new proud db. That was the name of our database. 
And they should actually be in what quotes. Okay. So we can go ahead and then just confirm that. We can go ahead and confirm that. So this is the name of our database. This is the name of our database, the new crowd DB. So we can just go ahead and just con try the connection. Now we can go down here. In order to do this, we can just create a variable called form, which is basically for the connection. And it's called to new. We're going to use the object oriented approach. So to new my SQL I and I'm going to put in this information within the seven day. Copy the seven day. This is the connection. We're just trying to connect to the database. Let's also bring the username of our database. We paste that right there. We get the password. We paste that common password. And finally, the name of the database. Okay, so I think we are done with this, but we need to check if our connection is actually working before we proceed. Okay, we'll check if our connection is actually working. So I'll come down here, let me just see, put some comment over like check connection, and then we'll go down and then just check connection. So what I'm going to see is, we'll bring exclamation sign. So if the connection is not successful, so this is our connection. If our connection is not successful, then what are we going to do? We're going to say die. We're going to end everything. We're going to say MySQLI underscore error. And then this error is actually going to be our connection. Okay, so our connection error. We're going to give us the connection error. So we're just going to turn this. this. Now our database is set. So our database is set. In order to check this, Let's just run this and see what is going to happen. If it's not gotten any error, then that means our database is actually working. So I can copy the path, copy the path, and let's check this within our browser. Go ahead over here. Paste this within our browser. All I have to do is change this one to local host. So if there's no error, then our database is actually connected to so our connection. As you can see, it's actually working because we have no error. So we've created our database to be able to do the connection successfully. There's no error. So now that we have our connection working, we can proceed and then actually send the data to our database. Let's check this if it's actually going to work. Now we have this, just as I have over right here, the previous one, let's send the data for our new application. So in order to send information to our database, we come down here and then we have to just Make sure we connect to our database over here, the connection of our database. So I'm going to include PHP right here, PHP. And we are actually going to first call our connection. So let's include our connection at the top. So include, include, and this is actually going to be put. Include our connection name is DP Connect dot PHP. And then make sure we end this with a semicolon. Now, after the connection, we actually going to check if the submit button has been actually clicked. So we're going to see if if it's set. If it's set, that is going to be we are posting our value. So we're going to use the post. We're going to use post over here. So select post. And we're going to submit this information. So this is going to be submit. Just going to make sure this is already submitted. And after this, we're going to post the following value. So it's going to be dollar name. First, we're going to submit the name. And this is actually going to be equal to, we're going to assign, we're going to post this and then store this with the name, every value that we're going to submit to our database. So this is going to be. We're going to use the post for this so this is going to be the name just as we have over here we created this so these are the values we're going to use the name email and then order so over here it's going to be single quotes first is going to be the name and then make sure we actually end this in the second column how do you put this and then the next one is actually going to be the next one is actually going to be the email of our email over here and then i'm going to modify this and then Make sure this is email. Then the next one is going to be phone number. 
would have a phone number here phone number and then still will be phone number okay and then lastly we're going to have a password so i'm going to just call this variable let me just call it pass and then here let's go into your password okay so now we have this setup and we have to write sql statements in order to send this to the database so to write this we're going to have SQL statement, so let's just call this SQL score to I'm going to insert this value. So let's say insert into so the name of our database for you. So we can just confirm that just by going to our database. So the name of our database is user. As you can see, the name is user. So we're just going to insert this record. So target user, we're going to insert into user. And then we want to target the name. So name, we want to enter the name of the user, email, we want to also add phone number, and finally we are adding our password. Okay, so these are the values I'm entering, these are the values I have over here. Now that we have this, we're going to say the values are going to be as follows. So values, the values are going to enter and this are going to be in single quotes so it's going to be the value we stored over here these are the values we stored over here it's going to be dollar d and the next one is going to be email so we enter email comma we're also going to enter phone number phone number so, so i'm actually going to break this down here and then finally it's going to be pass so that's going to be a password okay i think this is set now we have everything set up and i'm just going to end this sql statement now we need to execute this statement so in order to execute this we actually going to do this simple trick what we're going to do is i'm going to check if indeed we're going to run this query so we're going to check so what we're going to do next is to run this query by using if i'm just going to summarize this i'm going to make this simple so if this query i'm going to write this query if so what i'm going to do next is to run this query so if my sql underscore query and then i'm first going to take the connection remember we added the connection at the top and also the next is going to be our sql connection here and we actually going to go ahead and see if this connection is successful then echo record added so okay so if everything is perfect if this query runs successfully then just echo Let's see, new user added successfully. Okay, and then we end this instance. Okay, else, then else, what is going to happen is that we're going to say die, we're going to end this die. My SQL error. And this arrow is going to throw it back to our connection. So, one of this. And that is what we want to do at this stage. We're going to end this, and then if everything is set and everything is right, then we should be able to add information or records to our database. So, we'll go back and then try this for the first time. This is our new system. And then what we're going to do is let me reload this page. And let me just try and then add any random user into the system. Let me see. Set and email. I'm gonna going to see email, email is going to be set at gmail.com and then just add any 
random phone number and then also and then random password and click on submit we are seeing what new user added successfully you can see we have the message right here new user added successfully then we can check then we can check this from our database let's just reload this it should come to our database we try to reload this and you can see i've added set set at gmail.com this admin added to our database successfully this is amazing now we have everything working up to this stage and the next thing we need to do is if you check this system my final project over here we need to actually add this and then display this to the user so we need to have a home page where we have a column where we can add a new user we can add a button here so what we're going to do next is to create a new page so this page is actually going to be called index page where we can display our record so index dot php so we're going to create some useful information over here so on this page what we're going to do first is to add our connection we're going to add our connection at the top over here so i'm going to say php and my connection is going to be here so i'm going to include my connection so include db connect.php and then i'll end this with a semicolon now I'm going to do some few things over here. What I'm going to do is that let me actually create a form down here. So this form over here, I'm going to include some bootstrap properties. So let's just say broad application. So that should be my title. And I'm actually going to embed the bootstrap property. And what I want to do is that I'll probably link this within the header here. I'll just copy this from here. I'll copy this from here and then when I come back to my index page, I'll just paste this right here. I'll paste this right here and then I'll start creating a button. So I want to add this button. If you look at the final application, I want to first add this button to this form. So I'm going to go ahead and then just add the container. So div dot container and then hit tab. And then within this container, I'm going to first add a button. Okay, so in this button, we want to say add a new user. So what we're going to do is that let's first give a class to this class. And this class is going to be btn, btn dash, right? That's bootstrap party we want to add to this. And then I want to make the button a link. I'm going to link it to our add user page. So what I'm going to do is that I want to create a link over here. This is going to be add user dot php so we're going to add it to anytime we click on that button it's going to take us to that page and here we're going to say add new new user so that is what we're going to do over here then this is set and i'm just going to re save this and then we, let's copy this link i'm going to copy this link let's open this within our browser i'm just going to paste this here and then make sure you change this to local host okay so we should be getting our buttons we have our button here you can see the text on it we're just going to format this just by saying we're going to give some class to the link over here so i'm going to say class bootstrap class i'm going to say text text light so you can see this so i'm going to save this and when I reload this, you should see what this. So you can see I have another line. If you want to just move the other line from there, we can just go ahead and then do that. But before that, I'm just going to add some margin around this one button and have some space. Okay, so let me just go here and see. Give some margin around this of five. Okay. And I'm going to save this. Then we have some space around this. I just want to remove the underlining for my button. Okay. Just want to remove the underlining. And what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to add some inline style sheet. And this is going to be text. I'm going to say text decoration. Text decoration. I'm going to set it to none. Okay. So. That is all I want to do. Text the 
Grace and I'm gonna set it to a stun over here. Think my spelling is wrong, so just gonna save this. And when we reload this in the browser, we should remove the underline. Okay, so this is now. Now we're going to just add our form, and this is basically going to be a table. We're going to display our record, the whole page. We're going to display a table down here. So in order to do this, we go down over here and create our table. Let me just collapse this so my line is not too much. So under this div, under this div, we're going to start creating a new table. Okay, so let's do this within the same table by showing the name the button. So this is going to be table. And I'm going to give a class, a bootstrap class called table. Okay, so I'm just going to call this table. And within this, we're going to press create our table. We're going to create our table head. So we're going to have our table head right here. And then within the head, we're going to create a table row. Okay, so the data we're going to have within this table is going to be th as a table head. And the table head, we're going to have, we're going to have an ID. Let's have ID and then I'm just going to click this a couple of times and the next one is going to be next one is going to be the The name we have email Then finally We have she have phone number and then the operation Okay, I'm just going to duplicate this one and then I'm going to add the operation and I will explain that to you. Okay, so when I save this, then I reload this, we should be getting the information this way. Now, the operation is basically what we do the update or delete. So that is what I'm going to place over here. So now we have going to get our ID, the name, email, phone number, and then the operation. Now, after we get this, we need to actually display this to the user. Okay. So, we're going to next, the next thing we're going to do is to display this. So, we're going to create, actually, going to create down here after the table head, we're going to create a new, a new table row. Okay. So, this is actually going to be the table body. So, table body. And within this, we actually going to add some PHP information where we're going to actually select. So we're going to pull the record from the database. So that is what we're going to do over here. So I'm just going to add PHP here. We're going to add PHP right here. And we're going to use the select feature. So we're going to have first write a query over here. So query as SQL. So we're gonna see we're gonna write a query over SQL and this is going to be we're gonna select the information from the database so select all so the star means all from so remember the table we are using is called user so we're gonna select everything from user and we end this statement going to end this and now we actually need to actually run this screen to come down here and then we're going to see we're going to see results go to my sqli underscore query okay and in this it's going to take two variables our connection connection and our sql So these are the two things we're gonna add to this. Let me just make sure my connection is there. So we have our connection at the top. We don't really have any problem. So now we're gonna go ahead and proceed to actually run this. Okay, we're actually gonna display this record. So we're actually gonna display these results down here, just as half here. So we're gonna use the power loop to display this because we have no idea which number, we have no idea the number of record that will be in the database so we need to use the value to actually do that so we're going to focus on the value in order to display these results so to do this we're going to say 
if results so if this is working then what we're going to do is to actually use the raw loop wow and we're going to see row we're going to create a new variable called row and this should be equal to my sql fetch fetch socks so associate so we're going to fetch this result from the database and this is actually going to be our results this is going to be actually going to display this re results on our page using the while loop and then the first thing we're going to display is basically the id so we're going to say dollar id and this we're going to say we're going to use our row so what i'm going to do is to say dollar row so this row i'm actually going to pick the id we're going to pick the id and then store it in a new variable called id okay and we're going to do this for every other information we are going to display on our index page so the next one is going to be the name so we need the name as well and i'm going to enter name right here i'm going to have the name the next one is going to be email so after email we're going to follow the full number and then i'm going to have the phone number as well yeah i'm gonna have yeah, the phone number okay so we have all this information set and what we're gonna do is to actually echo this within our index page so i'm just gonna say down here what i'm gonna say is i'm gonna say echo And this is going to be a code, and I'm going to include my table. Okay, we already have a table head over here. I'm going to display this result, and what we'll do is to we'll use the echo. And then within this, what I'm going to do is to create a table row. And remember, when we create this, we actually need to end this as well. Okay, so within this table row, the first thing I'm going to do is to just echo my table data just by using the echo statement and this is going to be appended so i'm going to have my id dollar id so i'm going to make this the same line and yes what i need to do is to duplicate it for the rest so I'll duplicate this and the next one is going to be for name i'm going to save this and then open this within the browser okay so we have some error in line 31 we have some line error in line 31 okay so over here i think the spelling of query some spelling mistake over here that is this is supposed to be sql okay so this is supposed to be sql so let me just save this and then we'll go back and then reload this reload, reload this in our browser okay you can see already we have our information being populated i have the id we only have just one user within this database over here as you can set we have only that displayed on our page okay so what we want to do is that let's add another record so we can just click over here and you can see we're going to have a new way to add a new record so let's see we want to add john over here we add john and let's say john at gmail.com so john at gmail.com let me just add in a random number and then we click on submit okay new user added successfully so we go to the database we go to our database and then let's reload this we should be getting this record within our database so we added a new user so now we can just go back and then just refresh our main page 
I'm going to move back to our index page. Let's just reload this page. And then we should be getting the new user. Let me just reload this. You can see the new user has been added. Now, what I want us to do is that anytime we add a new user and then we add a new user, automatically it should redirect us back to our index page. It should redirect us to this page. So let's go back to add new user page. So we'll go back to add new user page over here. So instead of getting echo add new user successfully, let's rather go back to our index page. We're going to see header. So we're going to see header and we're going to see location. It should be put location and the location is actually going to be our index dot php. So we want to redirect after we add a new user, we should redirect it back to our index page. That is where we have our record display. But now we we'll go back and then let's try this. Let's reload this. And let's try adding a new user. So I'm going to add Amanda here. And let's see. Amanda at gmail.com. And then add some random number. And then let's see. Yes, in full now. Once I click on submit, you can see it's going to bring us back to the index page and the record will display. Now we want to if you look at the final application, the operation we need updates, delete, and we want to add that to our page. That is going to be the operation side. So that's going to be the next thing we need to add to our page. So we let's go ahead and go back to our code, and then we're going to do this right in front of the index page. So we're going to do this down here, and I'm going to walk you through how to add that so now let's just come down and so i'm going to do this outside the php and then i can actually move it back okay i can copy it and paste it in the echo statement so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create table data here so this is actually going to be td and within this i'm actually going to add a button within this so button and then within this button what i'm going to do is that i'm going to add a class so the first one is going to be class and the class is going to be btn btn private that is for updating okay so this is going to be for updates so we're just going to go ahead and do this for updates and i want this to be a link so over here what i'm going to do is that i'm actually going to create a link here and this link is going to take us back to update.php I'm yet to create that file, but I'm going to show you how we can do that. So update. We're going to say update. Update here. And we want the same for the second one, which is going to be delete. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to just copy this, duplicate this. I'm just going to duplicate this. And over here, this is actually going to be no primary but danger. Okay. And these are bootstrap classes and this is going to be delete delete.php and over here is going to be what delete okay so over here this is going to be what delete okay i think this is set and we'll be doing some few modification to this let's first go ahead let's save this and then now let's try and create delete dot php and then also create update dot php okay so we have this tool let me just save this and then after i'm done with this what i want to do is we can just copy this file let me just copy this file here i'll copy this file now and then let me just paste it right here i'm just going to paste it within this i just want it to be within same part so let me just put everything here i'm just going to realign this and i'll save this and then open this within the browser we'll go back to our browser here just reload this and you can see we have our button here i have some few corrections i need to make with this and i didn't close my tax well so i think i have extra tax here to close and thing okay so i'm just going to save this and then reload this again 
okay i think this is not safe but we need to first work on our text so our text we need to display as white so i'm just going to work on that so just go back and then here i'm going to say text and this text is actually going to be for our link so i'll come here and give a class and this class is going to text light so this is going to be text light and then i'll copy the same class for this side as well for the delete I'm just want to save this get back to my page then reload this you can see our texts are now very visible and then what we can do is to basically go ahead and also remove the other line so we can just add a css property so right here i can say style is for two text text decoration text is going to go to none and then i'll just copy the same thing we just will copy the same thing for my update So now we can see there's no underlying okay. showing for our text. Now I'm just going to work on my table. I think there's some way information I didn't really align. Well, so I'm going to work. I didn't close this table. I didn't close this table data. So let me just save this. Let's reload this back within our browser. Let's now reload this within our browser. I think everything now is well aligned. Now what we want to do is now to allow users to be able to click on update and then update the page, update this record, and then also delete so when i click on this it's going to take me to the update page you can see this actually showing the browser that's update and when you click on delete as well it's going to take us towards the delete.php so now we want to just go ahead and do that but before that let's add another user and then see how it's going to update this so let's call this add the and then we're going to create hello the add the and then Let's add some random numbers. So once we click on once this, it's going to bring us back here. You can see we just added add it to our system. So now what we need to do is be able to delete this, to be able to delete it and also update this record. So that is what we're going to do next. And in order to do this, we need to target the update button and also add a delete button. So now because we want to delete this, we need to target the ID. The ID is our primary key. So when you click on this, we should be able to target the ID. So to do this what i'm going to do is i'll come down here and then after my update.php after my update.php i'm just going to put question mark here so i'm going to insert a php data over there and this i'm going to create a new variable for update id which is basically equal to my id so we've already store this id already here this variable so i'm actually going to target that so that's going to be dollar dot id and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to do the same thing for our we're going to do the same thing for the delete so we just put the question mark over here and this is going to be delete so this is going to be delete id equal to and this is going to be dot id okay so when we save this i click on save and i'll go back and then reload this page later i'll point to make a side you can see automatically you can see down here you can see the id i've selected updated id is there if i move it to delete you can see deleted id number two this is showing at the bottom left corner so now we can target our id now that we target our id we can now delete a user from the data so let's go to the delete first and then we'll go to the update so now that we know the ids we can target individual ids which are the primary keys let's see how we can delete an individual from the system okay so we need to go to our page and then we've already created a delete page and then as usual we need to 
indicate our reason ps2 so i'm gonna say ps2 and i need to call my database so i need to include my database here so use the include and this is going to be db connect.php and now what you need to do is we'll come down here and then i'm just going to use if it sets so what i'm going to do is that if a set i'm going to use get because we want to be able to track the id within the browser we need to track the id within the url so i'm going to use get instead of using post okay so over here i'm going to see get and i'm going to say delete id remember we've already created this id on the index page so this is what i'm going to use this delete id that is what i'm going to use over here so over here i'm going to say delete delete id and we'll write some few sql statements we are only targeting the id for now and i'm going to store this using the get statement i'm going to use the get and that is going to be the delete id okay so i'm going to pick the delete id and store it within this id and i'm going to just end this and down here i'm not going to write my sql query to actually delete this from my database so it should be sql statement this is for to delete from our database for user where id is equal to id remember we store everything in this id so where id is equal to id now we need to run this query so we're going to say results sorry we're going to say results equal to my sql Query. and over here we need two statements that is going to be the connection for our database and also our SQL statement so these are the two information we need over here and I will go ahead and also check if this result is perfectly right. So we're gonna see if this results. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna echo. If everything is successful, then we're gonna echo. We're gonna say echo user deleted successfully. So this is basically what I want to do. If everything is okay, then user deleted successfully. Else, I'm just going to say die. I'm just going to end this entire process. I'm going to say, give me this SPO error. That's called error. And this is actually going to take our connection. Okay. And that is all over here. I'm just going to save this. And then we go back here. Let me just refresh the page. And then let's try delete change. And then we just have to reload this page and then click on delete. When you click on delete, you can see user deleted successfully. And that was the actual message we added over here. User deleted successfully. Now what we want to do is that after user is deleted, we want to redirect the user. We want to redirect the user back to the index page. So instead of using this, I can just comment this out and then rather go ahead and add a header here and then in this i'm going to say location location is going to be my index page so this is going to be index dot php and then i'll just close this so now if i save this 
go back to my page. So I'm actually going to reload this page now. I'm actually going to reload this page. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to delete another user. When I delete another user, you can see the user is deleted and automatically I'll be redirected back to this page. Just as we did to the new user. So we add a new user to our system. So let me just add Sky. So Sky delete. Adding this back. And let me just add in a random number and then click on submit. You can see this is going to direct us back and then the record is updated in real time. Everything you are doing over here is being updated in our database. So we delete it to automatically remove it from our database over here. And see the record is being updated. I just added Sky at Sky at gmail.com and this record has been added to our database. So once we delete something over here, it's going to be deleted from our database as well. Now we are done with the delete button, it's actually working. You're going to do the final work is going to be the update so when you click over here you can see it's going to take us to our update page and it's actually target id number six okay so we can now edit our information or update records and then we can actually end this project like subscribe and don't forget to turn on post notification for more videos so let's complete this by doing the update the update what we're going to do is that we need our phone back okay so we actually need this user form in order to do the update so to do this, what we're going to do is that we're actually going to copy every information over here on the add user page. We're actually going to copy everything here and then we'll copy this and then we'll go to updates and then just paste the same thing over here. Okay, so we're just going to paste everything we have over here. Let's save this. So when we save this and get back to this and click on update, you can see it's going to bring us here. But before we edit this, we want to just get the information. We want to make this very user friendly. So we want to just make the information available. Then we can determine which one to update. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to do some few modifications to our code. Okay. We're going to add some few information just to actually modify this code to make it more user friendly. So on the update page, we already have the include file over here. And we also want to use Okay, we've added a good file over here. So we just have to delete some few things and then also add some few things over here. So I'm going to sc scroll down here and then also add the ID. So ID, remember we've already targeted ID. And over here, we're going to say get. We're going to use the get function since we're going to pass our ID through the browser and we're going to target our update ID. update id so we're going to target our update id and then i'm going to end this and we've added this on my index page over here so this is the update id we've added over here we added it to the delete updates button over here so we'll go ahead and then just add the update id and we're going to also use sql statement okay this sql statement what i'm going to do is that we want to make sure we have information the information we have for the user appears within this particular update so everything we have for amanda when we click over here we want that to show within the text box then we can just go ahead and then update whatever information we want to so what we're going to do is that we're going to say we're just going to write some sql statements down here and that is going to be sql score so we're going to select that information bar okay so this is going to be select. I'm going to say select all. So the start means all from user. Okay, select all from user. Where, okay, where the ID is equal to the ID. So basically, it's equal to the ID, and this is the ID that we are getting. We store everything over here, and then let's end this, and then we we'll run this query. Okay, so to run this, we're going to see results result is called to my SQLI and that's called query and then over here we're going to pick two parameters that's our connection and then our SQL statement okay so we have these two and then we'll come down here and we're going to say row 
goal is called to we're going to fetch every information we have within the table so the row is called to my sql fetch so we're going to say fetch a sub to see so this and that is going to be our results here the input variable is going to say the results here okay and we come down and then this information we're going to add is the information we want to get into our text box so we need the name we need the email we need the phone number and then the password so those are the information we need so we actually want to target that so when i come down here first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to see the name and this is called to my row and this is actually going to be the name of the user okay so this is going to be the name of the user i'm going to do that for the rest so i'll just duplicate this three times the next one is going to be for the email and this is going to be email. actually i need to end this and the next one is going to be phone number Okay, so we had a phone number and lastly we actually need the password and here is going to be okay so this side is actually going to be the password that we actually needed okay so i'm going to save this actually going to save this and then go back and then we do this now when i click on update we basically don't have the information yet and i'm going to show you how we can make this information appear within our table okay so let's go ahead and do that now we'll go back here and then we'll go to our forms so we have the forms over here and we're just going to get the name side and then we're going to add values okay so here we're going to add value and the value is actually going to be php statement so we're going to add php statement over there so this is going to be php file so this is going to be php let me actually close this and then within this PHP, I'm going to echo the name. So I'm going to echo the name here. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this for the rest. Copy this, and the next one is also going to be the same. But this time around, I'm going to echo the email. I'm going to echo the email. I'm going to do that for the phone number as well. So this should be phone number and lastly i'm going to do that for password so by here is supposed to be and this is supposed to be pass and that's how i save it so richard is calling there the password so let's just confirm so this password let me just make sure everything is set let me check this out I think I can see I have some error here. I need to look at how to fix this. To fix this error. I think I need extra closing tag for this. I need another one here. Okay, so I believe this is set now. Let's just save this. Save this. Just go back to our browser. Let me reload this. Just reload this. Then let's click on update. And you can see we have everything here we have amanda here so it's easy for me to do any change so if i click on add i have add i have add email so if i made a mistake with the email maybe i just have to just update that and then click on submit and then this should be what updated you can see this information has been updated within our system so this is basically how to build a crude application using php and bootstrap i can just go ahead and let's add another person 
So let me see here. Yeah. Added a new person to our system. And then the phone number follows. Then I add some password to this and click on submit. And see automatically it's going to be directing back to the index page and the profile has been added. If you want to delete it, just click on delete and then that will go with from the system. Like subscribe for more tutorials like this. I'll be doing more coding tutorials. Like so that I don't miss any of that. So like come you again. Bye bye.